So the last one is the reference frame and the drift correction. I will show you some examples of using the reference frame, how reference frame can be used in uh, tracking, also how to do the, the uh, drift correction. So I will start from the drift correction, the easy way, the very simple uh, example. So let's go back to these 2D ones. So in this swimming LG uh, sample, which we demoed the last week, we have tracked the, the movement of these uh, the LGs. So if you notice, there are two uh, objects which is basically not moving. So we can use these two as an example uh, to do the drift correction. But basically it's not moving. We already seen there's no much drift. So if even if I correct with this result, you may not see uh, an obvious change. But I will show you using the other object maybe. So I just for example, if you have some uh, fixed, uh, fixed, how to say, fixed uh, object, which you can, like some bits, yes, I want to mention bits. So if you have some fixed bits as an indication for the, as a, a reference for the drift correction, then you can use those uh, position, that's those bits as a spot and they use that for the drift correction. For this one, uh, if you want to do the drift correction, go to the uh, edit tracks and here you will see a correct drift button here. So you can select the ones you want to use as the reference for the drift correction and click this button and say uh, correct image and uh, all objects. So here we have different options. So these spots are being created uh, after the track. So if I choose correct image only, then based on the spot I selected, Imaris will run the drift correction on the image only without touching or changing the previous track results. Okay, so that is the first option. Second option is correct image and the selected object, which means this spot tracking result will be corrected as well for all the spots, for all the spots inside this uh, spot object. Third option is, so let's say for example, on the same image, I have the spots and uh, I have some other spots or other cells, which I also tracked. By selecting this option, all the objects here, the track result will be corrected based on the, this uh, drift correction. Okay. And the reference frame correction is, uh, I will mention uh, in the next, next one in the next one. So I will show you this one first. So I have only one object, so it doesn't make any difference between these two. So I will use this one. And we can correct the uh, translational and the rotational drift. So for the 2D data set, if you want to correct the rotational drift as well, you will have need at least two, two spots. For the 3D, you need at least maybe three spots to correct the rotational drift. Then the result data size. So in, in this uh, drift correction, Imaris will resample the uh, image. So we will have the options for the result data size. Uh, depends on the degree of the, the drift, you may see a lot of drift, drift if you see a lot of drift, then uh, sometimes uh, you will resolve image. If you select this entire result, you will have a lot of empty space to uh, compensate the drift. Then if you want to keep them all, keep the old data set, you, have to, you can use these options. But usually uh, we select maybe the, the middle ones to create the same uh, new size equal to the current size. 
just to get rid of those uh, extra uh, space. Okay, so here if I click OK, you may not see a big difference because these two are actually not quite moving, but you see a slightly uh, uh, correction. So to be able to show you the, the, the drift correction, how it works, I will use this one. This one is actually moving. So you can see like it's moving from here to there. So let's say this one should be actually uh, not moving. So it should be fixed. This movement is due to the drift. So if I select this spot and then use as a drift correction, then uh, translational, then you should be able to see like this. So the whole image has been corrected based on the, the spot I selected. And because it's moving from up to down, then the whole image is corrected like this. Right, so all the tracks has been uh, corrected, all the results has been corrected based on this uh, drift correction reference point. So that is the one way you can use uh, in Imaris to correct your uh, drift, to correct your drift. Let me undo again. So another way you can see here is to use the uh, 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 reference frame correction. So reference frame correction is also uh, similar, but if I pick a reference frame correction here, just let me show you reference frame correction and the translational drift. Imaurus will put a reference frame, will pin the reference frame to this uh, spot I selected. Then along with the, the time points, time lapse, this uh, reference frame is always moving. I mean the fix on this uh, spot I selected. So here, uh, if you remember in the uh, last week's session, we mentioned about, oh, not last week, maybe a, a previous session, training session, we mentioned about the reference frame. Uh, if you add reference frame, is actually uh, create uh, another uh, coordinate system, then all the, all the statistics results related to the position will have uh, another statistic, which is to the reference frame. So here, if we, uh, we, we have the reference frame now. So if you use a reference frame, actually you can animate, animate this uh, uh, correction, uh, drift correction without changing, without changing the uh, raw data. So here I have the reference frame. If I play it, you can see the reference frame is moving, but if I, set reference frame as a play, play mode here using this button. Then when I play the movie, you can see it's actually the whole image is moving along with the reference frame. Right, so in, in the reference cor frame correction, you can kind of correct this uh, drift without uh, touching the uh, raw data. But also we can use this button to resample the image only. So these two uh, ways are kind of actually uh, in the same same correction. In the end, you can it can be the same correction if you use this button to correct the image as well. So after we have the uh, reference frame uh, under the spots, under the spots, we need to uh, redo the tracks, and this time we can to according to the reference frame. So if you want to calculate uh, the movement based on second uh, coordinate system, after you set a reference frame, you can go back to the spot and uh, redo the tracks and here select the reference frame. 
So in the track result, you will have this uh, reference frame related uh, tracking result as well. Okay, so that is uh, also how to use the reference frame in the, uh, the tracking drift correction or correction of the images. Uh, there are other uh, usage as well. So let me show you uh, from this one. Okay, it's just some quick example. So here I have the wound healing. Example is 2D image. And let's say if you want to uh, track this uh, cell movement, but not the whole, just the ones which is near, near this uh, edge of the cell, edge of the, the wound. So here uh, I can create because this movement is quite a linear image, so I can say in the first time point, my reference frame is here, sort of, or maybe here, okay? And to the middle is around here, so I move my reference frame to here, okay? Then it should always keep around here. Right, so you can see now I have the reference frame uh, automatically uh, interpret between the time points. It's quite uh, easy to use. Then after you do the tracking, uh, for example, let me do the tracking very quickly. I need to invert this one first to be able to uh, detect this sort of the cells. using the spot, okay, spot, track, no shortage distance, uh, size, say it's about 10, okay, the goal subtraction, Okay, so filter, filters, and here, let's say I have detected the, the cell that I want to detect, sort of, and here I can use the distance to from distance from the reference reference position reference friend so this is x so x reference friend so i can turn on both sides so i have reference friend here so if i want to measure some distance between let's say zero between here to like maybe uh 10 microns or oh, not 10 microns so it's minus minus maybe 20 or it's too small maybe minus 100 okay so from the H to the minus 100 positions, I want to measure, so always keep the same. Oh, not, maybe zero, or it's not. Okay, so like this. So it's always uh, filter out the, the ones that range, the ones in the range I want to uh, measure like this, so I can go to next, and I can track just this uh, spot to, to keep the, the result more simple. Or you can track everything, then filter using these same filters in, after you track everything. But if you have a lot of uh, data cells uh, or some object, you want to uh, make it uh, faster or quicker in the first place, so you can filter in this uh, step before tracking. If it, that will, if it will be easier for, for your PC to, to handle, then you can do it this step. So here is one example of using a reference frame. Another example is uh, the last one. Last one I want to show is this example. So we have some uh, chamber, egg chamber, and uh, this is time lapse. So when I play, you can see it's uh, rotation 
rotation and also the cells inside is rotate along with this chamber and also itself, this red cell itself may have some uh, changes. So in the example here, I, we create a surface for this, do I have the name here? The nucleus, the nucleus is the whole cell, cell membrane and let's name it the nucleus, for example. The nucleus, then we have this uh, rotation of the nucleus. Then let's say if we want to uh, display or we want to check whether this shape or the volume of this nucleus is uh, changed along with time. But due to this rotation, it is a little bit to uh, visualize, to visualize in the movie about the, the change of the shape or the size of this uh, nucleus. Uh, in this case, we can add the reference frame. So here what we do is uh, we select this service, whole service, whole uh, service object, and here we use the reference frame correction for all these all these uh, nucleus surface object. Then we made this uh, reference frame. Then if we anchor, uh, we set this reference frame display. You can see now the whole rotation is being uh, corrected, and the cell position, a nucleus position is fixed. It's fixed then you can see there is, uh, if there is some uh, change in the shape or in the size, it will be easier to, to visualize for each cell or each nucleus, sorry, I keep. <laughs> so here you can see there is a change in, let me see what's the color coding. Statistic, the volume. So you can now see the volume change with time with all the, uh, effect of this rotation. So if you keep rotation, you will have to uh, try to keep the eye, eye track on it. But if you uh, use the reference frame and uh, display it in the reference frame plan mode, it will may be easier for you to you know, tell people uh, what's happening about this nucleus, about the size change or if, uh, anything uh, morphological changes, you can fixed to this uh, view without the effect of the rotation. Okay, so that is another uh, usage of a reference frame in the tracking. Okay, I think that is all the points I want to uh, make today in today's uh, training. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask. Thanks so much, Asen. That was really yeah. great. Mm, the contact um, analysis brought me back to <laughs> when I first started doing this sort of analysis in Amaris, and I just spent hours and hours tracking each of those um, cells individually and looking whether they touched the other mm -hmm. cell. So yeah, that was, um, and that would have made my research a lot easier in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Good to hear that. Uh, we try to develop more uh, new applications in the new uh, versions. So that mm. is one uh, approach we try to make. Yeah. Yeah, this rotational one is really great too. I can couldn't imagine trying to track that with your eye over time. Yeah, yeah. So if you have some, for example, if you have a, a zebra fish, which is not really fixed, some, some drift or something, you can use the, the surface of zebra fish to, as a reference frame. Mm -hmm. Then if you want to track the blood flow or some movement inside the zebra fish, then you can always fix the view of zebra fish, then track the, the, the dynamics events okay. inside the zebra fish without the effect of the you know, drift or the rotation yeah. is possible. Yeah, so you can, can use that.
Yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly what we do here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the reference frame for the wound healing is also really helpful. Mm -hmm. oh, for some for some cases, yeah, uh, yeah. If they just want to measure the the cells within a specific range, then uh, or area, then mm. they might be helpful. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really yeah. good one. Okay, so I think okay. uh, yeah, there is no yes. no 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 much. Yeah. So, but anyway, uh, if you have some questions uh, in the future, anytime you can uh, ask me or mm -hmm. drop me an email, so I will try to uh, reply. Yeah, great. That yeah, great. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much again for your time, Arsen. No problem. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll have see a you. Nice day. Thanks. See you, you too. Bye. Bye.